there's enough evil in people's own hearts to do a lot of the stuff that's going on. But Satan will come in and take it to a whole nother level. We've got to recognize it for what it is. This is spiritual warfare. The church, there will be others who will try to water down the movement so that the church can't stand and be what the church was called to be. And we've got to be aware of that. So again, God, grow me up in the faith. God, make me bold in sharing my faith. And God, deliver me, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I recognize. And so again, my brothers and sisters, as I close, I leave you with these words. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 2 and 3, it says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. For we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house not built by human hands. For God said, let light shine out of darkness. And God made his light to shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, verse 8 of that uh, chapter in 2 Corinthians says, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. And we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may reveal, may be revealed in our body. On September 5th in 1861, a man by the name of H.G. Spafford married Anna Larson of Stavanger, Norway. The Spaffords were well known in the 1860s and in, in Chicago. Horatio was a prominent lawyer, and he and his wife were prominent supporters and close friends of the evangelist Dwight L. Moody. Spafford invested heavily in the city's real estate, and then the great Chicago fire happened and swept through the city in 1871. It destroyed everything, almost everything Spafford owned. The Spafford's only son was killed by scarlet fever at the age of four. And two years later, in 1873, Spafford decided to take his family on a holiday somewhere in Europe. And he chose England because he knew that his friend, D.L. Moody, would be there preaching in the fall. He was delayed because of business, so he sent his family ahead, his wife and their four children. That by this time, he had daughters, 11-year-old Anna, Annie, 9-year-old Margaret Lee, 5-year-old Elizabeth, also called Bessie, and 2-year-old uh, Tanetta. On, October, on November 22nd, in the year 1873, while crossing the Atlantic on, the, on a steamship, their ship was struck by an iron sailing vessel and 226 people lost their lives, including all four of Spafford's daughters. Anna Spafford survived the tragedy, his wife, and upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram to Spafford, and she started with these words, saved but saved alone. Spafford sailed to England, and going over the location of where he knew his four daughters lay at the bottom of the ocean, he began, to, he went back to his cabin and sat down and wrote these words. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. My brothers and sisters, I don't know what you ask God for. I ask God, grow me up in the faith. Make me bold in proclaiming the faith that I'm growing up in. And then God, deliver me from the 
evil in my own heart as well as the evil that is out to try and stop me. God is able. God will not leave us. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a whole army should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Oh, thank God. One thing that I've desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the tents of the Lord, to inquire in his temple and to behold his beauty. My brothers and sisters, what are you asking God for? 